I'll say. And we're your token theater friends coming at you from the Pershing Square Signature Center at, in New York City, where Be More Chill by Joe Iconis is currently playing to raucous fans, raucous fans. It's huge. Right? It's huge. Go listen to the cast album. So we have a really exciting episode for you. It's a Be More Chill episode where we will learn how to be chill. <laughs> and, and who are we talking to, Jose? We are talking to the stars of the show, Will Roland and Jason Tan. And we are also playing a special game with composer Joe Iconics. So let's go check it out. We are here with Jason Tam and Will Rowland of Be More Chill. So guys, uh, just to get started, who do you play in the show? Um, I play Jeremy here, uh, who is our, uh, our, our uh, unlikely leading man. He is uh, a high school junior who is uh, in all ways unremarkable. Uh, he's not very special. He's uh, not very well liked. He has one friend at school, his friend Michael. Um, and early on in our play, uh, Jeremy discovers uh, this thing called a squip. That's which me. is a which is played by Jason, uh, who is a <laughs> a squip, a super <laughs> quantum unit Intel processor, and it's in a pill form, and you take it with Mountain Dew. It's, don't know why it's just something about the Mountain Dew, and it implants itself in your brain. And I play sort of a visual representation of that supercomputer that kind of helps coach Jeremy on how to be more chill, how to get popular, how to get things that he wants, um, and how to how to interact with people that he otherwise wouldn't know how to interact with. In the show, Will's character Jeremy says, says to his script, "Oh my God, you're Keanu Reeves." Yeah. So who would your script be in real life? I feel like it changes every day. At one point, my script was Daniel Day Kim, and I felt really mm. strongly about that. Um, and then, and then another day, it was like kind of rainy. And then my script was like Maggie Smith, <laughs> like as um, Wendy in the movie Hook. Um, <laughs> It's just, it's always, it's morphing. What about you? I wrote, uh, my post-it in the lobby says Jerry Orbach, um, but I also in the past have said that Kermit the Frog would be my squib. Oh yeah, it's good um, just, just yesterday, I, uh, my girlfriend reminded me that uh, I have said in the past that uh, Ruby Manger would be my squib, who is a yeah. character played by Julia Madison uh, in her, uh, her solo show as Ruby Manger, oh, cool. who is this sort of like, this grand dame of the theater, <laughs> who's an amalgam of many different ladies. Um, and she's like, she's got a lot of quotables that I use daily. <laughs> that actually like makes a lot of sense now. Yeah, okay. So on a scale from Jeremy to Squip, how chill are you? I'm very not chill. <laughs> Me neither. Like not even a little bit. So uh, this is all acting and pretending. Um, and mimicry, and it's a lot of fun because I am so not chill in life that it's like really fun to get to pretend to be chill and maybe have some of that rub off on me in real life. I, uh, I, I'm a person who projects a very calm, cool veneer uh, on the inside. I'm uh, constantly freaking out. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's fun to get to overtly freak out for two and a half hours every night. Yeah. Um, and then find some sort of, you know, calm and peace by the end. Uh, I, I find on days where we rehearse like the top sections of the show, I leave rehearsal like Ugh, like my shoulders are hunched over and I feel bad. Uh, but when we run the whole show, I leave like my life is great, everything's good, I'm gonna be fine. It, it has a real effect on me in that way. Yeah. Who were you guys in high school? What table in the cafeteria were you sitting at? I I was like very much a drifter. Um, but I, uh, I, I, I had like a pretty, uh, like a, I had like a good high school experience. It was not a, I, I, I was a very sort of like, uh, uh charismatic, uh, sort of well-liked individual. I, I, at my school sort of like doing theater or, or, or being, uh, you know, I was sort of in a lot of like honors classes and things like that. Those were all things that like people liked, like everyone would come to the shows and like when you were leading the show, like that was a cool thing. And so I would like host pep rallies and like, you know, all sorts of like assemblies and functions and things like that. Um, and I just, uh, 
I, I definitely, like when I started high school, was like a little bit less uh, kind than I was by my senior year. I think part of my journey over those couple of years was to uh, check my ego a little bit. Were you um, a bully? I was a bully. <gasps> oh yeah, yeah, no, I was absolutely a bully. Yeah, I was like, I was like me. And, I was a bully, um, but like in like maybe second or third grade, I and was, that ended real quick. I was then, a bully like sixth through eighth grade, really? and then it ended in like eighth, ninth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Fascinating. What about you in high school, Jason? Uh, me in high school, I well, I hung out most. I was kind of a drifter as well, but I hung out mm -hmm. mostly with the like alternative crew, the skaters and like <laughs> the smokers. I didn't smoke. I've 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 smoked one cigarette in my entire life, and it was for a short film. Um, for the teens out there, yes, he doesn't yes, smoke. I don't smoke. <laughs> don't smoke. It's bad. No, truly. Mm -hmm. um, but I just loved hanging out with the smokers. I would like <laughs> sneak off campus with them and just like hang out. I still like hanging out with the smokers. I do too. I'm like, uh, if too. I'm ever on like a regional gig, you'll find me at intermission, like out with the crew, like in the wherever we all go smoke. Yeah. And I, I don't smoke, but I, I, it's a good place to I be. I love the idea of it. And I love escaping. Um, but, uh, but I was sort of a drifter as well. I hung out with the theater crowd. And then also um, uh, at the time, uh, the best theater program was at a public school in Hawaii called Castle High School and so I, mm -hmm. I went to Punahou High School but I would spend like almost all of my time after school at Castle High School so I was like super close with the theater and dance people there. Uh, wait, so neither of you were theater, musical theater? Oh yeah, no, in high did, school? did a okay. ton of theater okay. but it was like, uh, it was like very much a, like there were only, I went to a very small high school, there were only like 80 or 90 kids in a grade. So like when we did Les Mis and there were like 70 people in the cast, like it represented like a fair portion of the high school. Um, you know, like one, you know, one in four, one in five kids was in the play um, <laughs> when we would do a big popular play. And so, uh, so like that, it wasn't like uh, the idea of like, oh, like the theater kids in the corner was not really like how it existed in our <laughs> ecosystem. Um, it was much more, you know, a lot of kids took theater, um, you know, like they, there was a sort of large portion of the population enrolled in theater classes and it wasn't such a sort of niche thing. But I did spend a lot of my time in the theater. Same. Yeah. Well, you're so great at playing teenagers. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I wonder, do you have any famous teenager that you would love to play on stage at some point? A famous teenager I would love to play on the stage. If I'm being entirely honest, I would love for Jeremy here to be the last teenager I play, maybe. <laughs> um, I am uh, uh, I'm, I'm quite, quite nearly 30 years old, uh, and I have played a lot of teenagers in my life. And uh, I would love to start playing a grown-up at some point. Um, uh, but I, uh, I, I mean, you know, if they ever did like a Ferris Bueller musical, like I'd, I'd love to like, you know, slip that one in there uh, as one last hurrah. But, um, but no, I, I mean, I played some, uh, I played some great teenagers, some, some young men that I've come to love. And, and my biggest sort of takeaway from all that is, uh, I think that our, we as adults, can sometimes be uh, reductive of the teenage experience. Uh, because we have some sort of distance from it. Um, I, I am a, a firm believer in uh, teenagers are just adults who have had uh, fewer life experiences than older people only because of time. Uh, you know, so people ask me like, what's different? I'm like, I don't know, like my posture? But, but like beyond that, there's not a there's not a huge difference of playing a teenager versus playing an adult. Uh, so Jason, you, you did Jesus Christ Superstar and you did K-pop uh -huh. and I feel like this is a great time for Asian American representation, diversity, and musical theater. Yeah. And so like, well, what's your what's been your takeaway from like this great season you've been having? My takeaway, I'm I'm intensely grateful to be a part of this season right now and to be uh, be able to uh, be playing the um, the uh, this of roles that I'm playing? What is that? Yeah. What, what's the, the word stretch. that I'm looking for? This, this, yeah, this type, yeah. This, yeah uh, the range. The range of roles range. that have been um, available to somebody that lives in this body. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm just intensely grateful and so excited to see what comes next, both for me personally and also like as a community, uh, uh, you know, within the Asian American entertainment industry and also in the entertainment industry as a whole. It's very exciting. Thank you guys and congratulations Thank you. on the show. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Yes, Joe, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So, Joe, what's 
The musical that made you first fall in love with musicals. The musical that made me first fall in love with musicals was Little Shop of Horrors, and it was the first musical that I ever saw. I saw it as uh, it was a gift for my uh, sixth birthday. Uh, I saw it on September twenty seventh, nineteen eighty seven, and it literally like changed my life. It, it made me immediately love uh, all things musical theater. So I think that anyone who knows your career and probably who knows you in, in you know in life knows that you are obsessed with Sondheim and Kermit the Frog. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we are going to have you play a little game with us. Oh no. <laughs> but there's a special prize involved. Okay. So I'm gonna read you uh, lyrics from a song and you have to tell me if they're Sondheim or Muppets. Great. And if you get two out of three, mm -hmm. you get the special prize. Amazing. So, are you ready? Um, I hope so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine my whole life is just preparing me for this very moment. <laughs> so, That's like a lead up to Jeopardy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. So I won't be singing, so I'll just read you the first lyric. Mm -hmm. I can dance a tango. I can read Greek easy. I can slay a dragon any old week easy. Is that Sondheim or Muppet song? That is Sondheim. Wow. Yay. No pause there. Yeah. Gosh. Uh, the Beamer Chill is like very sci-fi-ish and mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't know that going in that it's going to be a sci-fi teen musical. Right, right. And, so, and that's not, that's rare I think on, on in musical theater land. So what have mm -hmm. been the challenges in like playing with this genre? Yeah, um, I mean for, you know, for me it's, uh, it's been exciting to play in the genre, you know, and I love that the idea of like a sci-fi teen musical is not something that um, that uh, you know, you can look to examples of in like the canon of musical theater, right? Mm -hmm. I, lo I love the idea that it that people like go into the show and it's a little bit like, what am I supposed to expect? You know, that's like a <laughs> thrilling thing to me. Um, and so uh, I I'm so inspired by uh, by movies. You know, I'm so inspired mm -hmm. by uh, by film and. Um, and the sort of sci-fi references in the show, you know, they skew like older, like sort of 50s, like monster movies, and then they're like, yeah. you know, 80s, like uh, John Carpenter movies and uh, like sci-fi horror stuff. And so for me, it's been like really uh, super exciting to, to use those like genre elements in talking about these like huge issues that, um, you know, that people go through, like, you know, anxiety and depression and all that sort of stuff. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's been about like finding the balance, you know, and like not tipping too far into like full-blown, you know, sci-fi madness uh, or, you know, tipping too far into teen angst, sort of like finding that, that middle ground, okay. you know? Ready for the second question? Yeah, I'm so ready. Okay. A world of skies that's bursting with surprise to open up your eyes for joy. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's Muppets. No, really? What is that? Let's take me to the world. Oh Let's my oh world. my god. Oh my god. <laughs> no. You think we were gonna make yeah. it easy for you. I really yeah. <laughs> Take me okay. Yeah. You yeah. get one more chance for the special prize. I'm horrified. Yeah. <laughs> horrified of myself. I knew anyone can whistle. Man, yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> So, I mean, this show is known, uh, Be More Chill is known for its rabid teenage fan base. Mm -hmm. And so, in creating the show, what has it made you learn about talking to teenagers and relating to, you know, the next generation? Um, it's made me realize that teenagers today are a lot different than teenagers when I was a teenager. I've been continually amazed at how uh, articulate and open and, um, and uh, smart these teenagers are. Uh, are who I have gotten the chance to encounter because of the show. You know, when we initially did the show, um, it was hard to, it was hard to convince anyone, uh, meaning like, you know, adult fancy theater people, that the show <laughs> was anything more than like a goofy teen comedy. You know, I would say like this stuff like, oh, it's about like these big issues and Michael in the bathroom is like a musical panic attack. and. And everyone would just kind of be like, mm-hmm, that's cute. Yeah, that's yeah. That's not serious. <laughs> right, 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 right. You're silly, you know, goofy comedy. Uh, and so it was really young people who s saw this show and immediately like, were, were like, oh, yeah, this is really real. And this is about, you know, this and this is about this and this. And they, like, related to it so strongly. Um, and so, and that has, like, sort of infected the general perception of the show. And so that's, um, it's just, it's amazing to me that it, that's, you know, literally uh, the, the, the youth has, has done that. And sort of like opened up the eyes of of the older generation mm -hmm. to look a little deeper and be like, oh, this is what the show is actually about, you know. But I just I can't. I was like a super shy 
kid, I was very uncomfortable, uh, you know, my own, my own skin. And like the way that these kids will come up to me and just talk to me about like this stuff that's so personal um, and make such like smart connections uh, 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 between their own lives and what's going on in the show, it just blows my mind, you know, and um, it's really, it's really amazing. It, it, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of um, daunting, you know, when I'm in mm-hmm. conversations with them, I want to like live up to, to whatever they, uh, they have in their mind, you know, the creator of this thing they like is, is going to say. So, yeah. Yeah. How good are you at Snapchat now? It, <laughs> Snapchat is the <laughs> one that I can't do. I've gotten very good at, uh, you know, like Instagram and Twitter. Like, I'm fairly, like, you know, social media literate. But Snapchat, I just can't, like, I can't make the, the jump into Snapchat. Mm. Gotta get some, some of those teen fans to teach you how to do it. I know. I know. I mean, that feels like it's it's asking for, like, a little bit of trouble to just be like, <laughs> hey, teenagers, will you teach me how to Snapchat? I feel like then that's when I become, like, you know, I, that's when I start getting, like, like things written about me on message boards. But I'll, you know, I'll just Google it. I'll Google how to, how to Snapchat for adults. <laughs> I'm going to start there. It seems safer. Awesome. So <laughs> make the teenagers proud because this one's for the game show. Are you ready? Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. ready. It seems you blend in with so many other ordinary things. Muppets? Ding, 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 ding. You are our winner. Yay! <laughs> oh, God. For your prize, we What's have a prize? special American Theater Magazine publisher tote bag. Whoa! And the stuff inside, it's from Japan. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Where's my prize? Here's my prize! <laughs> Sondheim reference. Oh, cool! It's, it's Japanese candy. That's, Japanese candy. Because we couldn't find a squip. Mm-hmm. So we thought Understandable. this was, you know. You know, when you can't find a squip, cool <laughs> Japanese watermelon gummy candy is the second best thing. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I know, that was right? great. And as always, remember to find us on Twitter, subscribe to our channel on YouTube, or watch our videos on Facebook or the American Theatre Magazine page. And remember to subscribe to our podcast if you would rather listen to us talk to Joe Iconis instead of watch us drop to talk to Joe Iconis, which, why would you do that? Whatever. And as always, theater's more fun when you take your friends. Bye. Bye. It's also more chill. It's also way more chill. <laughs> Especially if you're going to be on stage with your friends. Okay.